doing is he was watching you know, on his computer for hours and hours and hours. He was looking at child porn to the point that he decides, I want to go try this. And he goes and he grabs Holly and he does some things to her. And then he realizes, what am I going to do? Okay. And he panics. He doesn't know what to do because she's a witness now. And he says, if I just let her go, she's going to tell on me. So he decides that he's not going to let her go. And all that was from something as simple as watching child pornography for hours on end. These things happen. Okay? You can't see it happen close to home. The trauma's not that far from you. Okay? These things happen all the time. Right? So what I need to do is sit with you. Um, I already know how. I know the who's. Right? Uh, why? I mean, why is up to you. But I can actually probably fill in that blank for you. But that's not what my rule here is. If I'm going to um, assess risk here and see, number one, do you even feel bad about what you've done? That's the first thing I look for. And number two, do I think, okay, he doesn't feel bad, so in turn he's probably going to do this again because he really doesn't care about it the first time it's happened, okay? But I also know that you've probably made some uh, some other choices in life and to uh, who you associate with, right? We've all done that. We've all brought home a girlfriend or a boyfriend or something that uh, people aren't going to approve of, and we've all had friends that our family's not going to approve of. I've done that. We all have. Okay, so that's what we have to sit and uh, sit and look at here. But uh, it, it's uh, uh, one of those things. That, like I say, I'm not. I'm not at all um, upset with you. I'm not mad at you. Um, I don't mind sitting here talking with you. You'll know if I don't want to talk to you because I'll just simply leave, right? And uh, I have no issues with that. But at the same time, you and I need to have open communication. Like I appreciate you clarifying with me when I comment about a break-in, okay, because I have to make sure that you understand the terminology I use, and I have to understand the terminology that you're using as well. Now, as I go through this, like I say, there'll be a few things that, uh, that, I, may, uh, that I may cover off that you may say, uh, I don't understand that, but having said that, um, from, from reading about you, this to me seems like it's out of character. No, I could be wrong, right? Um, you may, have, uh, you may have been planning this for, for a long period of time, and you may have thoroughly enjoyed this. And if I'm wrong, then you tell me that, all right? But I also know that we all make mistakes, okay? And that's why pencils have erasers, okay? Because we all make mistakes. It's that simple. Um, spending time with you here, and if I'm wrong, you tell me, but it looks like if you could turn back time, maybe there's a few decisions in life you'd have made a little bit different, all right? If I could turn back time for you, Mike, I would but it's not that simple, okay? So now you and I have to sit here and face what's happened, okay? I can sit and tell you what happened. I can take you through the day of her disappearance, okay? I mean, I've seen the uh, I've seen the video, all right? And I know that you didn't do this alone, And uh, but at the end of the day, we've got to, uh, we've got to deal with the situation, okay? Because it's a, it's a, a young girl that we got to talk about, and if uh, you and I don't sit and talk about your side, then people will only think the worst. Right? It's human nature. Right? You've done it and I've done it. We always think the worst until we know the facts. Okay? So that's what you and I need to sit here and work and discuss and work through. Again, if I'm wrong, you tell me. Okay? But I really believe if you could turn back time, you would deal, this a, deal with this a little bit different. Okay? And there may have been a rush. It may have been exciting for a period of time. But then reality sets in. And you have to sit and live with the fact of what's happened. Okay? And that's what we're doing here. We have to sit here deal with what's happened. Now, I can take you to any point in that day when Tori goes missing, from the time she goes missing to the time things get out of hand, all right? And I can outline that to you. And I can outline some of the, um, what's called post-offense behavior. So after the offense, some of the behavior that happened there, getting rid of some of the evidence and things like that, okay? Um, your vehicle's been seized, and there's been some steps you've taken to kind of mask or get rid of some of that evidence. You may be successful in some ways, but you won't be successful getting rid of all the evidence and all the DNA, because there's not a cleanser out there that'll do that. And I've sat with dozens of people that have tried, okay? There's no magical uh, stain remover out there to get rid of, uh, of DNA. Um, so really at this point, what you have left is your word and your credibility. And people always think the worst, okay, until they know the truth. You do it and I do it. It's human nature. So. We're all going to think the worst until we know why this has happened in your mind. And again, if it's something where you're like Michael Briere, where you looked at a lot of child porn and then decided you were going to try it, then that's fine. If 
if it wasn't your idea, then that's fine too. But we can't change what the case facts are. All right? Is there anything that I've said other than that breaking thing that I've got wrong at this point in time? Because I'm breaking it down. Or right. That's fine. You don't have to say if it's wrong or right. Okay? But you know deep down that it is. And you know deep down that this is your chance to get it off your chest. You're not sitting there the rest of your life saying, I guess I should have said something. All right? I guess I should have got it off my chest and said my side. Because this is your last chance to do it. The fact that you're here and the fact that uh, um, they've already, uh, um, they know where, where the victim is, okay? And they know your steps. This is it. Do you watch Ultimate Fighting at all? No. You don't watch it? Okay. Um, you have to take the steps now to live the rest of your life. Okay? This is what you have to do. You and I need to talk about this. Okay? So I've got to determine, as part of my job, when all is said and done here, do I think Mike's done? This is it. He's made his mistake. He realizes how wrong he... Uh, the mistake that he made and he's willing to look past it? Or do I have to sit here and say, all right, my report's going to say very simple. I think this guy's going to re-offend. I think this guy is going to kill Isn't that for courts to decide if I've even done it or not? The, the courts will decide if uh, what your role is in this, in this particular case. My role is to write a report for the court to determine what I think your risk level is. And that's uh, there's other reports uh, that, that, that my units uh, write as well. And that's what our job is. We deal with these types of situations and the, and the reasons why people do this stuff, okay? Um, like I say, this may have been a thing that uh, you just snapped and did something. That stuff happens. Or it may have been something you planned for many months and got some enjoyment out of the plan. I okay? didn't do anything. Well, that's not entirely true. Either. That is okay. entirely true. I, no. I didn't do anything. No, you can try and cement yourself into that, okay? But at the same time, you're not doing yourself any good by not being truthful here, okay? Because by not being truthful, all you have left is your credibility, Mike. That's all you have left, okay? Um, you're not the only person uh, who's been arrested and charged, okay? And uh, there's no surprises left anymore, okay? The only su it's not even a surprise, it's why this happened. You're also not the well, only innocent person who's ever been arrested and charged. Well, that's true. There's been people that... Uh, have been arrested for things where there's no evidence, but unfortunately in this case there's lots of evidence to determine your role in this crime, okay? Even the steps that you've taken to try and eliminate your involvement, okay? Clearly, uh, clearly, I guess maybe I should explain the evidence a little bit more. Maybe, that, maybe that's uh, my mistake, but uh, because I'm so comfortable in the facts and that I've dealt with all this, maybe I should be making, you know, put you at ease a little bit more. But the reality of it is, as I mentioned earlier, your vehicle seen on the video, okay? The girl who's, who's on the video who walks away with Tori has been identified, and she's been identified of, as uh, her and Tori being in your car. And the three of you, you and her and Tori, uh, go to the Guelph area, go to the Home Depot, okay? And, and the grabbing of, uh, of Tori, there was a, was a planned event that you were going to grab her. You're going to grab a girl. This other person was going to do it, and the other person got the girl, put her in your car, all right? And and then there's other steps that are taken from there, okay? There's things that happen at Home Depot, there's things, things that happen outside of Guelph, and there's things that happen to Tori, all right, before she's gone. And uh, you're involved in that, and you can't you can't mask that, you can't change it, okay? No, 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 no. Because what's happened has happened. I can't turn back the hands of time, and neither can you, okay? There's uh, there's nothing I can do to turn back the hands of time and say, I wish Mike would have reacted to this situation a little bit differently, okay? Um, there's been tips come in on you sooner than, than recently. There's been there's been a few tips. There's been a few people that have mentioned your name in the past. Uh, and when all these tips are put together, then the ball starts rolling. Um, and then the fact that when they dissect these tapes, and they also go in both directions of the tape. They go before they see Tori, and they go after they see Tori. And lo and behold, there's your car, all right? And that starts it as well. So there's, um, and then after, and I think, I don't know if you're aware of how much media attention was given, but then they start collecting the videos from the highway, right, to see which vehicles went where. So the, the video is going to play a very key role. A videotape to evidence will play a very key role in this investigation in determining what happened, because there's cameras everywhere. Right? The average Canadian is on camera eight times a day, 
whether we go to a gas station, whether we go to Tim Hortons, or we drive through a, a, a light that has a camera. Um, certain communities have cameras, uh, certain uh, weather stations have cameras or news stations. So we will go through as Canadians a minimum of eight cameras a day. So you, you go through cameras as have I. We've all, we've all done that. There's no, no questioning that, that we've all what, seen these cameras or, or been on these cameras. But there's no doubt in my mind, okay? There's no doubt in my mind that you're involved in the abduction, okay, of Tori. No doubt in my mind at all. I followed the evidence. Mm -hmm. I've read the file, okay? There's no doubt in my mind. We're past that, okay? And the only concern or the issue that I have is why you did this. What caused you to do this? Was it something you, like you say, is this something that you've done before? And you've been involved in the death of other people? And you enjoyed this? Am I sitting across the... the uh, the desk from Paul Bernardo here? Or am I sitting across from someone who's made a mistake? Okay? And that's going to be the question that's asked of you. Alright? I'll get you a bucket there in just a second. You better get sick and blow your boots, sir. Okay? I've seen it before. You're not going to offend me or bother me. So if you got to be sick, Mike, go right ahead. No. Get you some paper towels or something. If you feel like you're going to be sick, just uh, just grab the. Uh, I'll have the bucket there handy for you. Okay. Just leave it right there. You and I need to uh, to uh, have a discussion. This isn't uh, uh, this isn't a parking ticket. Okay. This is uh, this is reality. Okay. And people are. I've already told you. You know this. People assume the worst until they know the truth. Okay. And people are going to assume the worst of you unless you and I sit here and clarify it. Okay, something's pushed you to do this. Okay, you don't. You can't just fly under the radar your entire life. Okay, Mike, it doesn't happen. It's not realistic. I'm not going to sit and tell you that it happened. Something brings this on. When you sit and talk to uh, someone who had a troubled life like uh, Michael Breer and just gets pushed into doing this and panics and thinks, what would it be like to, to take a kid and, and touch and rub a kid and then wish you could stop? Okay, and people can't, and that's the whole issue here. All right. We can't control every emotion, all right? We can't control some of our urges, some of our thoughts. None of us can, okay? And I can't look you in the face and say I haven't made a mistake or made a bad decision in life because I have. But the reality of it is you and I have to accept that and move on, okay? Because I can walk out there and never see you again. Like, I can do that, right? My job here is done. The job here is done, as you'll find out tomorrow, um, as things start to, uh, to be released. Um, there is no more questions. There is no more long drawn out investigations. They're already sending people home to spend time with their families, okay? They're scaling back what's happened because it's been cleared and they know what's happened and the pieces of evidence have been gathered. So that's that's reality. I can't downplay that. But you and I need to walk out of here together, okay? With what happened here. You and I have to sit and say, this is what pushed Mike over the top. This is what pushed Mike to get involved in something like this. Because if we don't, then you sit here on your own and you have to take it. Okay? And is that necessarily fair? All right? I have to sit here on my own anyways and take this. To an extent you do, yes. You have to sit there and decide, am I going to get rid of this and get this off my chest so people understand my side, or am I going to sit there curled up and, uh, and keep it in for, for the rest of my life, all right? You need to be realistic about this, okay? You have no battle plan to deal with this, right? It's happened, it's spun out of control, and you're thinking, okay, if I ever get caught for it, what am I going to do? Well, your, your plan isn't going to work. Okay, because you're not built for this shit. This isn't what you're about. Okay, you're not some sick bastard, right? That uh, that sits there and gets enjoyment out of hurting people. All right, so now you have to live with this. Okay, and to live with it, one of the first ways, right? It's like if someone's an alcoholic, what's the first thing they have to do? Acknowledge they got the issue. All right, you have an issue here in that there's overwhelming evidence, compelling evidence that indicates you're involved in what's happened to Tori. Okay, and no, I can't change that, and you can't change that at this stage. But you need to be honest, and you need to understand. Your credibility, Mike, is all you have left. All you have left from here on in is your credibility. And you sitting here saying nothing doesn't do you a bit of good, because no one's going to know. And then all of a sudden, ten years from now or five years from now, you decide to say something, who's going to listen? Nobody. Okay? This is your chance to say your piece. All right? The evidence is very clear. I'm only giving you bits and pieces. If I sit here from A to Z and tell you all of it, we'll be here all night. Okay? Um, and that's really not my my purpose. Alright? So you 
you need to understand what's going on. Okay? There's evidence to show what happened here, all right? And what caused you to do what you did. That's what's important. What would cause you to get involved in, a, in an incident like this, okay? And like I say, you probably were feeling pretty good about yourself for a while because really, like I said, it wasn't until May 15th that the police had been around the sea. And they'd never say anything about your vehicle being on the video. They, they released the other vehicle instead, all right? But you know, your vehicle's on there. It's plain as day. And uh, um, like I say, if you want, and you can see probably, I'm trying not to out of respect actually for you, but I can sit and get as um, um, graphic as, as, as I want, okay? Because none of this stuff uh, bothers me because I've seen it hundreds of times, okay? But if I sit and go over what, uh, what's happened here with Tori, you may not be real happy about it because it's going to cause you to relive all this crap, okay? And maybe you want to because I can tell you I've sat with guys that wanted me to say it again.